Let's look at configuring Subversion. So first of all, what is Subversion? Subversion is a software program that allows you to have your source code stored in a repository. It makes it easier for you to do things like collaboratively work on projects or save different versions of your source code. So I'm going to install the Subversion package. Subversion. Also, um, version. In addition to the subversion package, I want to install Apache and mod dav SVN so that I can do web web based connections to my repository. So HTTP and mod dav SVN. Okay, so I'll install these packages. Once these packages are installed, you need to decide where you want to put your repositories on your server. So I'm going to use the var svn directory because it's kind of close to my web pages. So var svn. First, you need to create the directory. And once the directory is created, I need to start creating my repositories. So uh, let's make directory var, var svn. Directory is created. I can go over to that var svn directory and I can take a look and see that it's empty. There's nothing there. So I want to create a project. So this is going to be my hello world project. Um, so I'll create a hello world repository and you can use that, use the svn admin program to create that, to create a hello. So this creates my hello project. You can see in the hello directory that you created, there's a bunch of files now. There's a conf and database and everything else we need. Now I want to make it so that Apache has access to the files in this directory. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the ownership of the directory to be Apache. So I do a ch own and do Apache Apache for user and group. And I will do the var svn directory. And I guess I will do a minus capital R. So recursively, it'll change everything to be owned by Apache in the var svn. I take a look around and I can see that it is now owned by Apache. All right. So the next thing we're going to run into is when I'm using my machine, I have SE Linux turned on because I don't really like my machine to get hacked and messed up. So I have S, uh, SE Linux turned on and I want to make it so that this content is read writable. And if I look at my context right now with capital Z, I can see that they're just var t because it's in the var directory and it doesn't really know what to do with it. So I'm going to use the SE manage command to change the default context for this directory. So F context minus A minus T. The type I want it to be is HTTPD sys RW content T. And I want it for everything in the var SVN area. So there we go. That will change the default context for this directory. Now, once this is done, the next major step I have to go through is to change the context of these files. Because if you look right now, the context has not been changed. So I could do um, a restore con. A restore con is probably the best way to figure out if it's the default hasn't changed. So I do var svn with a capital R says so recursively changing everything. It'll change the context of all these files. I can look again and see that they have now been changed to HTTPD sys rw content t, which is what I want. All right. So now I've got that security stuff out of the way. So Apache can access the files and we are ready to now configure Apache so it knows about these files. Okay, 
So Apache has been installed and we have the modules probably installed as well. So let's take a look in the etc directory, etc httpd, and in the conf.modules.d directory, we should see that there is now a 10 dash subversion.conf file, which lists all the modules loaded for subversion. Okay, that's there. Now we want to create a configuration file to tell Apache what to do. Click over in the etc httpd conf.d directory. I like to have it as a separate file instead of in the regular httpd.conf file because it makes it a little cleaner and easier to make changes later. So I'm going to do nano on uh, subversion.conf. Okay. In this file, I want to tell it where my location is. So I use the location directive for them. And I tell it that whenever it has an SVN in the URL, it's going to go to my SVN repository. So my SVN parent path is going to be set to var SVN because that's the directory I created for that. I also want some basic authentication. You can have each individual project do its own authentication. I'll just put some basic authentication. So basic authentication, except I can't spell today. All right. So my auth name is going to be subversion repos. And the auth type is going to be basic. And my auth basic provider is going to be a file. And that file, auth user file, is going to be stored at var svn slash dot ht password. Okay, so that's my basic file there. And I'm going to also require that every going there is a valid user. Okay, so now I can close my location tag and I am ready. At this point, it's probably a good idea to create a password file. So I'll use the httpsswd command and I'll pass it minus C option to create the file. And the user var svn dot httpsswd. And I'm going to create a user Alice because Alice wants to be able to do checkout stuff and do all of her programming. So make your password aloha123, aloha123. Her user has now been created, the password is there, everything is ready to go on that end. However, the clients can still not connect because my firewall is going to be in the way. So I'm going to take the firewall and make the firewall out of the way. CMD, make a permanent rule, and I'm going to add the service HTTP. Now, ideally, you'd probably do ideally, you would set it up so you're using HTTPS, but we're going to do it quickly with HTTP instead. So, firewall reload. So, now the Permit rule has been loaded from the configuration file into the machine and it's ready to go. The last step I need to do is to actually turn on my Apache web server. Now, if you already have the web server running, you wouldn't need to turn on, you just need to restart it or reload it. Either way, you can do it with a system, the uh, system CTL uh, restart. HTTPD, 
dot service or without the dot service it will start it up and once it's running and it started smoothly you might want to make sure it starts on boot time so enable HTTPD. you don't need the dot service for either one of these but sometimes you put it in there it creates a symbolic link that allow it to then start up on boot time now my server is ready to go and my repository is there now i just need to have a client connect up so i'm going to switch over to my client machine all right when you're on a client machine it's usually a good idea to create some kind of a directory where you're going to save all of your checked out repositories save all your source code so i will make a directory projects so in this projects directory you can see there's nothing there. I'm going to check out my projects. Now I've got a couple of options. Um, I can either use SSH to check out the project or I can use HTTP. We're just going to use HTTP because, well, that's how I created it. But I don't have Subversion installed, so I need to do yum minus y install subversion get that and then I can use the SVN checkout command to check out my project now uh, I'm logged in as root but it's Alice who's gonna be checking out the project so the Alice is the user if I was logged in in Alice's account that would be easy it'd be just right there um, but to check it out I use SVN checkout if so, check out correctly. Or you can just type in a CO for checkout. And then the username is going to be Alice. And the path is over my server, which is at server.example.com slash SVN. That's the directory. And hello is the project. And then I need to type in the password, which was Aloha123. And it says that there was a problem. It's unable to connect to the server. All right, whenever you get some kind of error like this, it's best to go back to the server and see if you can figure out what happened. So I was trying to put in the password and it had an issue there. And then it was unable to get information. So I would check the password file. So we go to var svn and take a look around. You can see that there are these, the file is there. It's not owned by Apache, but Apache does have read access to the file. So that isn't the issue. So do ls minus a z. And we can see that the context is incorrect. So let's try a restore con access or HD password and look again and its context has been changed. So that might solve it. So let's go back to the client machine and try again. And it's aloha one, two, three. And it still does not work. Okay. So the error message looks the same. Let's go ahead and go back to the server and see if we can figure out what happened. Sometimes Apache will block things if they're too permissive or other things. Um, maybe we'll take out the RW for just that file. Um, because Apache doesn't like to have vulnerabilities. So do a ch con minus t httpd sys content t and we'll do it for the .ht password file and also for this current directory. Let me see, now we've taken it away. All right, um, it's still on my root, but Apache can still read it, but Apache can't edit it and will not have the ability to edit it anymore because it won't be owned by Apache. Um, 
Well, let's go ahead and try again. And one more time, we will run the command. And this time, let's see if it works. Oh, this time it asks us if we want to save our password, which is a good sign. So we want to, let's go ahead and say yes, because we want to store it as a very insecure way. And now you have your project all checked out. Now you can go in this hello directory and you can see all this, well, nothing there really, just the .svn file. So we're going to create a file, nano hello.py, make a quick little hello world program. Python, and let's just print hello world. Exit out of that and change permissions. Hello, and run it. Make sure it works. It looks like it runs. It's great. Now we want to add it to our repository. And so we'll do svn add hello.py. It's now added. You can do SVM stat to see what statistics you have. And says, well, we added this file. Now we're going to do a commit. SVN commit minus M. So created initial hello world program. And it now commits it and we have it. If we want to get any updates, because let's assume, assume someone else checked it out and they modified it, we could do SVN update and get any new revisions. And this is how you check it out and set it up using Apache. Now, if you wanted to use SSH instead, and when you do the checkout, you would do SVN uh, check out and you do a SVN plus SSH as your schema and then you do the location so it was a server.example.com you then have to I guess you also need to have the user so this would actually be root because it's more root and then or I guess it could be Apache, but you really don't want to log with Apache. And then you tell the path to the file. So var SVN. Hello. And let's try hello to let's try to save a different location. And yes. And you got to punch in the password. Assuming you know it. And you might have to do it multiple times because it has to check visions and versions and all kinds of things. So I checked out the project. So now you see there's two copies of it. I shouldn't have put it inside the other repository, but that's okay. Anyway, don't put it in the same directory as another repository because that makes it a little bit of a mess. So hello two, you can see it has its own copy right here. There you go. If you can do the uh, Apache based connections, that's probably the easiest and cleanest and the most standard. All right, that's how it works.